Small caps might be the next place to look for opportunity, according to Fast Money trader Julie Beal. She says that no matter how you pick them, the group is attractive. She is here to share some of her picks. Hey, Julie, nice to see you. Hi, so you think you guys. As a group, small, uh, small caps are trading um, more attractively than, than mid and large? Yeah, I mean, they're inexpensive relative to mid and large, but they're also inexpensive relative to themselves historically. They're kind of trading at multi-decade lows. And to me, that actually makes a ton of sense, right? Small caps tend to be more cyclical, more sensitive. It's harder for them to raise capital in difficult times. And they are still in a bit of an earnings recession. But if you kind of look under the hood, you can find small cap names that are much higher quality and that are actually growing their earnings. And they're not that expensive. So I think it's kind of an opportunity if you are willing to do the work to find some really nice little undiscovered gems. One I would think of was a company called Blackline Technologies. This is, you know, kind of in the sleepy domain of accounting software. But what's wonderful is their founder has returned to the business. And I think that's always a great sign when you get the founder back in the business and they can focus on the things they really care about, which in this case is running the product and not talking to like sloppy investors like me, yuck. Um, and I think they're really starting to turn their profitability around and there's still a lot of low hanging fruit for, for this business. So I think it's an interesting and, and compelling opportunity. The other one I like is Indava. This is a business that you know, has been able to grow revenue over time. It's also founder led with a strong ownership interest in the business. And what this gives you is the opportunity to participate in a lot of the fintech and payments markets, but without having to choose who the winners are gonna be. Indava is an IT provider, and so they help you decide who you should be using to upgrade your technology suite, but they're agnostic as to who that is. And so they're in this really nice position where they leverage their reputation and they give you a compelling value proposition in terms of how to install and implement all that software. So I think these are two interesting businesses. Both of the founders run the business and they own a lot of uh, stock themselves. So you're aligned with them. And that makes a big difference for long-term investors. Julie, in terms of the stocks, and Davis might be so bad that it's good. I say that because Morgan Stanley and HSBC both downgraded the stock last month. I think J.P. Morgan initiated neutral. But all the price targets have been raised to about 80 bucks or so, which is significantly higher than we are now. Is that it? The stock's just so depressed now that people are finding value? Yeah, I think there's pressure in terms of where they are in their cycle and the momentum in their business. They had a lot of momentum kind of coming out of COVID. And now people are a little bit concerned that while the long term looks really good, the near term, it's going to be hard for them to kind of keep repeating that business. But I, I think if you can kind of look through the valley of that, it's still a real opportunity for investors. Do you need small caps as a group to trade better in order for these individual stocks to trade better, Julie? No, I mean, there are plenty of very expensive small cap names that are high quality. It helps. It certainly doesn't hurt when small cap becomes more in favor. But, you know, the quality rises to the top over the long term. There's going to be near term periods where small cap just is out of favor no matter what you do. But I think you should always have at least a small part of small cap in your balanced portfolio diet. 